begin tonight um, with a new campaign to terrify you about health care reform. Within Congress, where what's going to happen is actually being worked out, the action is all among Democrats. And frankly, things are happening really fast now. Pressure from the left for major reforms is heavy, and it is starting to change the range of what's possible. Conservative Democratic Senator Max Baucus saying in an interview with the New York Times late today that because of pressure from the left, he will make more generous the subsidies in his bill to help people afford health insurance. Over in the House, the lead conservative blue dog Democrat on health care, Mike Ross of Arkansas, was hit at the end of last week with ads that threatened a Democratic primary challenger against him if he didn't support real reform, including the public option. Well, now Congressman Ross has been hit with devastating poll results, highlighting the risks of his stance against the public option to compete with private health insurance. This poll was commissioned by the liberal website Daily Coast, but it was carried out not by a liberal group, but by the nonpartisan traditional polling firm called Research 2000. The poll found that in Mike Ross's Arkansas district, voters in general are in favor of the public option. Independent voters in the district specifically are in favor of the public option. And among Democrats in Mike Ross's district, Democrats were in favor of the public option by a whopping 74%. That's the hardball context in which the specifics of what our new health care system is going to be like are being worked out. It's being worked out among Democrats. Republicans are just not a major part of the legislative process right now, as evidenced by the fact that even a senior Republican senator like Orrin Hatch today offered an amendment to the Baucus health care bill, singling out, and I quote, any state with a name that begins with the letter U to get special federal health care assistance. When your policy suggestions could double as skits about the alphabet on Sesame Street, it may be fair to say that you're not doing the real heavy lifting in developing legislation. But even as Republicans become more and more irrelevant to the content of any health reform bill, they are launching new attacks on the whole idea of reform itself. And they're scary. After promoting the idea that health reform was a secret plot to kill old people and a secret plot to take away veterans' health care and a secret plot to kill women with breast cancer and a secret plot to deny health care specifically to Republicans and even a secret plot to deny care to disabled children. That one was particularly classy. Just when you thought they might be running out of groups of Americans to scare about what secret plot lurks within health reform, they found a new one. A new survey being sent out by the National Republican Senatorial Committee says that health reform is actually a plot to deprive you of health care on the basis of your race. And, you know, the president is black, so we don't want to give you any ideas, but guess which race is going to be discriminated against? Yeah, under the heading, Rationing and Restricting Health Care, on this fundraising fake survey from the Republican Party, appears this question, quote, Are you concerned that health care rationing could lead to a quota system which would determine who would get treatment on the basis of race or age? We're not saying that's going to happen, but hypothetically, would that sort of thing concern you? Although they have been among the worst offenders in terms of scaring Americans by making stuff up about health reform, the Republican Party is not exactly alone here. Consider this letter that has been sent out from the health insurance company Humana to its older customers. Quote, millions of seniors and disabled individuals could lose many important benefits and services. In addition to that not being proposed by anyone in any of the health care bills under consideration, that sort of disingenuous health reform fear-mongering might also be illegal. Humana is now being investigated by the Department of Health and Human Services because the government pays Humana to provide Medicare Advantage coverage to Medicare patients. And by virtue of that, Humana has agreed to abide by some marketing rules, marketing rules that are basically in place so Medicare patients will be confused about who's sending them information about their benefits, confused between their insurance company and the government. 
Now, in this case, Humana says they don't think they broke the rules, but they are cooperating with the investigation nonetheless. Meanwhile, an advocacy group called Consumer Watchdog on Friday released a sheaf of internal underwriting guidelines from the industry that make clear just how sweet the deal has been for companies in the current system and how bad that system has been for those of us trying to use it to get our health needs met. Blue Cross of California guidelines from 2004, for example, said you could be disqualified from health coverage in certain circumstances if you had varicose veins. Health Net guidelines from 2006 said that you could be denied coverage or charged higher premiums if you ever had treatment for toenail fungus or allergies. Health Net said you could be rejected from coverage if you were pregnant or if you were an expectant father. Yes, who could ever be expected to cover a high-risk freak like that? A company called Pacific Care in 2003 not only said that pregnancy or being an expectant father were grounds for automatic rejection of health coverage, they also refused coverage to police officers and firefighters as a class. What's actually scary about health care is what passes for a health system in this country now. Why again is anyone in Congress fighting to preserve the industry that brought us the genius idea that police officers don't deserve health insurance in America? Why is it so important to preserve that system?